got this way You think I'm someone to be saved Someone to clean up and tame Oh, some things never change Never change oh. You think I would look pretty On your arm once you cover up my bruises And battle scars But it always ends the same Can't bear the things I've had to face Got you crying on your knees in pain Oh, some things never change Never change Asking for forgiveness Cause you should know Only fools tread with the angels Fear to go But you keep trying to get too close Save myself by turning into stone So save your judgment Cause you just don't know But some things never change Never change Oh They say I should feel guilty And change my ways Leave and crumple bodies In my wakes where I So mundane And they keep coming like a moth to a flame Oh, some things never change Never change Reckoning, you wonder how I got this way You think I'm someone to be saved Someone to clean up and tame Oh, some things never change, never change oh. You think I would look pretty On your arm once you cover up my bruises And battle scars, but it don't all right then, lads, welcome back to Kosi's Arsenal Podcast. My name is Kosi. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are, you know, parts of the world. We are back again. It is kind of an emergency show because, look, it, you know, look, it, it shouldn't be an emergency show because we had one at, we had to have one at five. Uh, and um, I was a little bit caught up in traffic and things like that. I had a few uh, commitments to take care of. But can you believe it? Can you believe it? Obama Young is no longer Arsenal captain, and that is the reason I had to rush and come and talk to you live. What is your opinion on that? What is your uh, you know reaction on that? Mikel Arteta has confirmed that Pierre Emerick Obama Young is no longer Arsenal captain. As we go into the West Ham game, he's not expected to be. Arsenal captain. We are going to be diving into that. Of course, he spoke about a couple of things uh, in his uh, Arsenal Western preview. Uh, I'll be able to let you know about, about the other things, the team news, the injuries. But the big topic, guys, is that Pierre Emerick Aubameyang, confirmed by the Arsenal website, confirmed by the Arsenal manager, Sky Sports, have also written that story. Pierre Emerick Aubameyang, no longer Arsenal captain. Where are we going? What exactly is happening at my beautiful football club? Make sure you smash a like on the video, people. Uh, make sure you do subscribe. Like, of course, this is in your home of Arsenal news. Yesterday, I spoke about the fact that uh, Aubameyang was going to get stripped of his captaincy. And I said a couple of candidates were being lined up uh, you know, by Arsenal. Gabriel Magales, Ben White, Ramsdale. All those stories that we've done Finally, the builder is over, and it is finally, it is time for us to get into the real story. Pell Emerick Aubameyang is no longer Arsenal captain. What, is, you know, what are your thoughts, guys, on the timing? Um, 
Of course, I asked you yesterday, what are your thoughts on the timing? What are your thoughts on the potential replacements? What are your thoughts on the fact that two uh, captains at Aston Football Club have been actually stripped of their captaincy and both of them are still at the club? Granny Jaka, of course, Stephen was stripped of his captaincy because of bad behavior, because of very, very poor behavior. Uh, and then Obama Young as well. What is so wrong with this club? Because uh, again, for me, it is not about Obama Young. It's not about Jaka. It is, uh, you know, they're not, um, they're not the cause. They're only indicators of how rotten the core, you know, the core is, of how rotten the, the, the bone marrow is. But anyway, we're going to be discussing that. And more. let's start off with, uh, um, let's start off with, um, with, with Sky Sport. This is what they've said. PL America Bamiyang has been stripped of his Arsenal captaincy and ruled out of the Western match. Aubameyang was not in Arsenal's squad to face Southampton uh, over a breach of discipline. Um, and of course, uh, uh, discipline, Mikel Arta said, we expect all our players, uh, you know, particularly our captain, that is important. He said, we expect all our players, particularly our captain, to work under the rules and standards we have set and agreed upon as a club. Um, that is what he said. Uh, that's what Mikel Arte said. And he said, ask Arsenal face, uh, and they're saying Arsenal face West Ham on Wednesday, and the forward will take no part in that game. Is this the end of Pierre Mkabamiang? Are we going to see Pierre Mkabamiang being treated the same way we treated Messi Uh, This is just water, but of course, if you have wine, if you have, you know, if you have anything, uh, make sure you do toast. Ah. I'm really happy that it's not going to be in that Western game, and I had to take a sip, uh, you know, uh, you know, just a simple sip. So, um, uh, 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 Sky uh, actually saying the Arsenal have stripped Pilmer Kabamiang of the club, uh, of the club uh, captaincy following a disciplinary breach last week. Abamiang was left out of the squad for sa uh, Saturday's match against Southampton, and Arsenal confirmed their decision to remove the forwards, uh, uh, the forward as captain. On Tuesday, the club also said Abamyang will not be available for selection against West Ham on Wednesday. Uh, Mikel Atta said we expect all our players, particularly our captain, to work um, uh, to work uh, to work to the rules and standards that we have set and agree, you know, agreed upon. The club said in a statement, uh, "There we are fully focused on tomorrow's match." Arsenal head coach Mikel Atta said that the pay uh, that uh, the painful decision had been made to defend the interests of the football club. The Spaniard confirmed that both he and the senior club officials had held a face-to-face -face conversations, uh, uh, had held face-to-face -face conversations with Pele Emre Kabameyang to inform him of their decision that he will not be any more Arsenal captain. Um, and this is what Mikhail said. I think it's, uh, it's really a clear statement from the club. Ateta, uh, you know, said during his pre-match press conference on Tuesday, it's a decision that we've made following the last incident that we had with the player. And this is where we stand on Pele Mikhail own the club and own the standards we want to set as Arsenal Football Club. He also said that we, uh, when we have to make that decision, obviously it's because that's a, you know, that is the right one to defend the interests of the football club. It's been a lot to digest and really difficult decision to make for us. So we need a, we needed a bit of time to make the decision. Uh, that uh, that we made, uh, you know, uh, uh, he, he says that to make the decision that we made uh, is because it's really hurting, and uh, you know, it's, it's still uh, and it's still this, and it needs to be, uh, it needs a little bit of time to heal. So, for, uh, so so far, again, he's not involved in the squad at the moment. Ateta suggested that there would be no rush to appoint a permanent replacement for Pele Merica Bamiang as captain, with members of the club's leadership group set to share the responsibility in the coming weeks. Right there. Um, Alexander Lacazette, who took the uh, armband for Saturday's win over Southampton, and former club captain Granny Jacka, both known members of the leadership group, whose other, car uh, whose other current members uh, Ateta was unwilling to confirm. Uh, it is really unpleasant situation, and it's not the moment to make any rash decisions, said Mikel Arteta. Of course, we're going to listen from Mikel Arteta. Uh, we're going to read his press conference live from our own uh, Arsenal website. So really, really, um, I'm just rushing through this, uh, you know, Sky Sports uh, uh, website. They also said the leadership group is really strong. Uh, he also said the leadership skill, uh, the le leadership group is also really, really strong. It is one that really communicates uh, with myself, the coaching staff, and with the club in a really, really very strong way. And we're going to continue like 
that. Okay, so um, guys, that is uh, what Mikel Arteta has spoken about, uh, according to Sky Sports. Of course, they did get in a, a few quotes. We'll try to look into those same quotes there on the Arsenal website as we react to Mikel Arteta's uh, press conference as we take on West Ham. But what are your thoughts there? What are your, you know, what are your major thoughts uh, on um, on wh what are your thoughts on Pearl Emerick Aubameyang being stripped of his captaincy there now? Um, it's a decision that has been taken, and why I disagree with Mikel Arteta is he says that this decision has been taken uh, off the actions of the player uh, in the last, um, uh, in, you, know, you know, following the last incident, following the latest incident. I think that is absolutely wrong. I think that is so wrong. Uh, Pele uh, you know, captaincy was already in jeopardy since last year. Since last season, I think you know his captaincy, his position has always been in jeopardy. Uh, he, he was really performing poorly as a player, and then the big question, you know, there was uh, um, why is he, you know, um, you know, uh, you know, performing very poorly, and then giving you, you know, giving in these very, very displ uh, disciplinary uh, records? What is actually happening with Pele Emerick Aubameyang? So now the club that has, uh, the, the club has confirmed uh, that uh, that. Uh, um, uh, Aubameyang has been stripped of his captaincy and you know this is much like a deja vu because the, uh, the club's leadership group consists again of Granite Xhaka can you believe it? Let's, talk, let's first focus on that before we go back to Aubameyang uh, and why I think uh, the club are actually uh, absolutely right so look there is no rush, de no rush decision to, uh, to, to replace Aubameyang uh, permanently, we understand. And at the moment, it's going to be uh, the leadership group. It's going to be Arsenal's leadership group uh, among the players uh, that is actually going to take action. And two of the senior members of the Arsenal leadership group um, uh, is uh, Alexander Lacazette, who I, who I am really, really okay with uh, in terms of discipline, professionalism, uh, and the ability to hold things uh, you know, in a very, very mature way. But why is Granit Xhaka even uh, in the hierarchy of players leading Arsenal? How is Granit Xhaka there? Okay, uh, I mean... Uh, we, uh, because you don't talk about that, our football, you, you, you're really, um, you're really uh, not on the side of our football club. Let me remind you guys, let me remind you of the incident. Granny Jaka took off an Arsenal jersey. Look, I'm not really putting on an Arsenal jersey today because uh, uh, I'm about to wash uh, all my jerseys. But he took off an Arsenal jersey and stepped on it. Don't forget that. It's not very, very not long ago, right? He, he took off an Arsenal jersey and stapled on it. And, you, uh, and you're now saying that the new leadership that is going to take over from uh, Pelham Rikabami, as whether as caretaking or as, the, you know, as permanent, is going to consist of Granit Xhaka. Are we crazy? Does it make any sense? Like, does it make sense that a player is stripped of his captaincy, but, he's, you know, but then he's, uh, you know, he's still rolling the dice down there? I mean, it, it's, 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 it's hypocrisy. It's absolute, absolute hypocrisy. And I think Arsenal didn't see this coming. Uh, they thought, okay, uh, let's take the captaincy away uh, from, um, uh, from Granit Xhaka. Let's take the captaincy away uh, and then uh, just make him maybe uh, you know, part of the leadership group. No one will ever notice. Look, listen to this. Now we know, right? Now we know Aubameyang is, you know, has performed poorly and now Xhaka is back as, uh, as, as, as one of the main leaders of the club. You know, what kind of picture does it paint in terms of, uh, you know, Arsenal as a club? Leave alone the results that we are not getting. Leave alone the fact that we're not even, in, you know, qualified to play in the UEFA Conference League. Leave alone the fact that we're not even in Europa or Champions League. But there's some, for me, trivial but big matters that we have actually taken for granted as Arsenal Football Club. And they're really costing this club. They're really trivial, but they're really costing the club. They're really, really costing the club. Xhaka, in the first place, he shouldn't be playing for Arsenal anymore. Honestly, we know that. His chances have run out. His chances ran out a long time ago, right? He was Arsenal captain. He was a disgrace. He disgraced the Arsenal jersey. He disgraced the Arsenal armband. He disgraced the fans. He disgraced everything we believe in as a club. He should be out of the window. He should be out of the door. Show him 
the door and make sure you tell him to close it when he leaves, right? He's a player that has always come out and said, oh, I, oh, I want to be a Roma. I, I feel like, you know, Italy is a very good, you know, is a very good country. And Roma is a, Rome is a very good city. I want to go to Roma. I want to be there. I just picture myself in, you know, myself in Roma. And then uh, a, a few weeks ago, before he returned, he said, you know what? I'm going to go to Borussia Mönchengladbach. If they take me, I would go back, right? He's a player that is not even connected yes he's been here for some long time maybe he's got the leadership up uh, you know uh, because he's been here and he's 30 but he's not really connected he's not enthusiastic he doesn't hold arsenal as dear as cl- as players like Saka. i'll give that umbrella to Saka because i know he cares about Arsenal for book club and when we lose again he da- you know he feels hard He's going to go back to his bed and he's going to f- find a uh, hard time to sleep. He's going to find hard time uh, to find sleep when we lose again. It doesn't happen with Jaka. I'm not even going to lie. It doesn't really happen with Jaka. So these players that have already come out in the media and they've said, for me, I want to go. I want to go to Roma. Uh, Marino wants me. I want to go to Roma. And I think Marino is a very, very good manager. And uh, he's one of the best managers in the world. If, if a player who says that, how do you give a player like that a new contract and uh, you know, and, and 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 give him more money because it, you know because well, because he praises another you know another manager is that's why we you know is, is that's why we give him more money it's absolute absolute rotten systems that are costing us these decisions that we are making look for me i'm going to say this pierre kabamiang uh, to get the captaincy was a mistake but he was not all bad he was a player who was playing with a smile. He was a player who lifted Arsenal onto his shoulders. And I'm always going to be grateful for that period. My problem, and, 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 and the problem of the captaincy, it is not on Ateta. Sorry, it's not on Abameyang. It is not on Jaka. It is on the people who, you know, who give these players the captaincy. What are the qualities you're looking for? What are the qualities you're looking at? Are there any criteria that you're looking at? Is there any criteria you're saying, okay, this is the criteria we are following, and I think, um, you know, player ABCD, uh, you know, does qualify. What is the qualification, right? Because, look, it, it's, you know, is it age? Is it being at the club for so long? Is that what we consider? Because if, is that what, you know, if, if that's what we consider, then we are absolutely ridiculous absolutely really ridiculous we are the worst club in the world if that's what we consider oh he's been here so long give him the captaincy what are you waiting for give him the captaincy he's been here for 10 years give him the captaincy been here for five 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 years give him the captaincy it's wrong you need to look at uh, the qual. you need to look at uh, at the qualities uh you know of the players you want to give the captaincy to so you know this is this is unbelievable abameyang is stepping down uh, we will dive into the discussion later. Aubameyang is stepping down uh, as Arsenal captain. And you know uh, the next leadership, right? You know the next leadership? It is Lacazette deputized by Xhaka. Come on, Arsenal. I, I'm, I'm really, I've, I've, been, I've been disappointed so many times in my club. I've been so much, so much disappointed by my club. But not like this, right? Not like this. Mikel Arte coming out so frankly... No, so frankly, saying um, uh, the, you know the club leadership, uh, you know the, the club leader, leadership hierarchy is gonna take over uh, at the moment. At the hierarchy, I'm not about the hierarchy is like I said, and Jaka really is that the best he can say? Like, w- w- I mean, if you're making Jaka, when we were making Jaka, uh, you know, a part of our um, you know, a part of our leadership, you know, uh, you know, hierarchy, did we remember what he did? Did we, actually, you know, even think about the reason as to why the uh, the captains was scrapped off? Because it doesn't make any sense, right? It's like you know, you fire someone uh, as president because they're so crap. And like, this president is so crap, you know, corrupt. We don't need him anywhere uh, in the presidency, uh, you know, in, in, in the you know, in the um, uh, you know, uh, presidential seat. But anyway, let's give him prime minister, right? Like, what do you mean? Exactly what do you mean? If Aubameyang is away, and like as it is away, that means Jaka is captain. He doesn't deserve it. Honestly, he doesn't deserve it. It's not being uh, unforgiving, but he doesn't deserve it. So that is a disgrace. Uh, one really mistake, uh, one really big mistake for Arsenal. And that is what I want to focus on in this video. 
how is this captaincy give you know given around Mikel has, has done something very good uh, and i agree to that he said we are not going to rush to give uh, the captaincy to anyone else I think it gives you time uh, to reflect on who should take that captaincy, um, you know, and when you should give it to them and things like that. I think that is a very, very good position, right? That's a very, very good, good position and decision from the club, as confirmed by Mikel Arteta. But let's say, let's talk, you know, let's speak about this, guys. How come Arsenal Football Club have two captains that have been stripped of the captaincy that have been taken that the armband has been taken away by force by action of discipline you know uh, by, 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 by action of disciplinary uh, you know consent or disciplinary action how come how did we get here right and for me the answer is you look at Aubameyang you look at um uh, you look at um uh, uh, Xhaka, and we blame them because I do blame them. They are mature. They should be you know, uh, uh, behaving a little bit mature and better than this. But one thing I'm going to say is these players, these situations are just a reflection of how rotten the system is. They're just a reflection of how rotten our club is. Right? Because anyone tell me, can anyone tell me how Mikel Arteta stood on his little small balls and said, I want Xhaka to stay? Like, those are that, you know, does he have the confidence to kick Xhaka out? Right? D does he have the confidence, uh, you know, to kick Xhaka out? It is rotten to the core. You have a manager that is um, really inexperienced. He's, you know, he's going to find it hard, uh, you know, to, to chase out the likes of Xhaka. That is one. Two, you have players that have been here for so long. I'm talking about the likes of Xhaka. They've been so long, here for so long. They're captains. They're doing whatever they want. And they're not benefiting the club. They're actually, they're actually hurting the club. So uh, this is, for me, just a reflection of how Arsenal is rotten and stone cranky. And, uh, you know, however much, uh, you know, cranky is out there, you know, uh, sip, I don't think he's sipping beer or, or Hennessy. Uh, because at the moment, he's not, I, I think he's, you know, glass. Uh, doesn't have hay in a can. Uh, because, uh, he, you know, he really has a lot of trouble in America there. And congratulations to, uh, you know, Cranky for having lots of trouble. At least you could have, you know, you could be troubled as we are troubled with Arsenal Football Club at the moment. So, however much Cranky is out there, you know, taking a shelter, right? Oh, Aubameyang is the bad man. Uh, I mean, you know, Cranky is taking the shelter. Because the, all these problems are being created, you know, created uh, by Stan Kroenke and his regime. You know, what he's actually enjoying is a shelter. You know, these are just shelters that I, I, I'm going to hide. I have a hiding. He's, you know, he's having a hiding place. That's it. He's, you know, he's only having these players, uh, these scenarios, these situations as hiding places. He's literally, he literally doesn't care if any, um, you know, anything goes wrong at Arsenal Football Club. He doesn't care. As long as he can hide himself under a thick blanket. And I think these situations are the thick blankets uh, that, um, uh, that Kronk, you know, Kronk is using. They shouldn't be blankets. We shouldn't focus only on Aubameyang and Jaka Anateta. Kronk doesn't accept this as well. He doesn't expect, you know, accept this. You know why? You know why he doesn't expect, you know, escape it? He employs Edu, he employs Vinay, he employs Mikel Arteta. That's why he doesn't escape it. And Edu, Vinay, and Mikel Arteta employ, or, 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 or is it, you know, it's either employ or, or, or they choose, or whatever they want, they choose Xhaka and Aubameyang as captains. So, you know, look, let me tell you something, guys. Let me tell you something. If we sacked Unai Emery, uh, after Xhaka throwing his uh, jersey down, if we sacked Unai Emery and brought in a manager like uh, Antonio Conte, I'm telling you Conte is a no nonsense manager. He doesn't keep Granny Xhaka. Honestly, he doesn't. He doesn't keep Granny Xhaka. After doing that, there is no way I am keeping you. Raf Ragnick, if you've had the latest you know, comments from Raf Ragnick, sorry to say this. Uh, I mean, it's, it's an old Arsenal show, but uh, I mean, we could use footballing references. He said about players that want to leave the club and said, let them go. <laughs> the United is a big club. Uh, we, you know, no player is bigger than United. Let them go. And I think that is the mentality that the likes of Mikel Arteta are killing our Arsenal football club. They're trying to show us the likes of Xhaka are too big. Arsenal cannot be without them. 
we really can. That's the reality. That is the truth. We can be, uh, you know, without Jaka, we can be about these lumpens who are actually causing our club to be disgraced. We can be, we can be very, very, very okay without them because we are a big club. We are, a, we are a brand uh, that is that, that has stood here ever since, you know, so long ago that you cannot even remember. Many of you on this stream were not born when Arsenal, uh, you know, football club started, and we will, you know. We're, Hopefully, when we die, this club is going to be, uh, you, know, uh, you know, it's going to continue. So, the likes of Mikel, the likes of Edu, because of their inexperience, right? They come in and they're like, okay, I can, uh, how do I tell Xhaka to go, right? I mean, it's, it's, it's like marrying a woman who is older than you and richer than you. How do you kick her out of the house? Like, how do you do it? How do you do it? Whenever she makes a mistake, you'll be like, okay, she will change, but, you know, I, she will be changed. You know, she will change. I hope it changes. You'll be hoping that she changes, but she will, she's never going to change because she's, you know, she doesn't, she has no respect for you. I think it's, it's, it's what's happening. Uh, this player signed under Asen Wenger. Wenger was very respectable. Every player, it, I, 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 did I hear any dressing room, uh, you know, chaos? Uh, Anderson Wenger. Yes, maybe there were a couple of scenarios. You have Wusha in the bathrooms smoking. I don't know what we're smoking, right? You know, smoking, you know, trash. You have, uh, you know, but there was a lot of odor on a Saint Wenger because that was the right system. That is the right system that Arsenal should be following. Have a decent manager. Have a decent manager. Have a decent manager. Have a decent manager, right? Have a decent manager. Now, Cronky. You know, you know th that guy is lucky, absolutely lucky, because there is no now, there is no focus. Uh, there is absolutely no focus. Have you seen? Have you seen a story in the mainstream saying Cranky is to blame for uh, whatever is happening at Arsenal at the moment? Have you seen it? It's not there. Like he's having a laugh. He's there in uh, uh in in the you know in the major league soccer, no, not in the major league soccer, uh, uh you know in in the. Um, National Basketball Association League and uh, you know and his rams he's having a laugh right he's sipping cappuccino he's you know he's sipping uh, sipping espressos because now the pressure is gone by the time we get over uh, uh, you know Aubameyang and the captaincy uh, and and who should be the next captain it's going to be January and January is transfers we are not going to focus on him uh, and then we uh, after January then um, you know it's going to be can Arsenal qualify for Champions League or Europa League when we qualify for Europa League we'll be like how do we then uh, you know set up our squad in the summer I, I think he has, he has already cleared his name throughout the year absolutely throughout the year but there are fans like me who will never forget uh, that the club is in its position because of you know, Stan Kroenke absolutely he has, you know, he's, he's made the wrong decisions. I, I don't know whether he's making the, you know, he's call, calling the cards, but whether he's calling the cards or not calling the card, cards, if you're the man, it's your house. It's your home, right? I, I mean, you know, a, anyone could say, you know, that, that, that you know, um, the, the home belongs to a woman that is an uh, African state, you know, setting and things like that. But let me tell you, you marry the wife, right? You, buy, you know, you pay the bride price uh, and whatever kind of crap, uh, and you bring, you know, you bring the woman home, and she is your wife. It is your home, therefore, right? Uh, yes, you could share the home. I mean, after divorce, you could take 50-50. But at the moment, at the moment, Cronky is the man in the house. He is the man. And it is so embarrassing that even the mainstream media, wherever they are, they, they actually try to cover him. It's so embarrassing. They, they cover for him. Oh, you know, I mean, um, don't, talk, no, don't, don't talk about Cronky. Uh, Abameng is at fault here. But the decisions that we are taking as a club are actually so wrong because we have, you know, we are under wrong ownership. We are under wrong ownership, and we are also under, uh, you know, wrong uh, a wrong manager. All and I mean, all because of Mikel Arteta. But anyway, uh, sorry, uh, all because of Stan Kroenke. Anyway, not because of Mikel Arteta. So, um, lads, let's speak about Aubameyang then. Let's get back to uh, the situation because I really wanted to share my thoughts uh, on, on 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 the clubs, uh, on the club, and where we are and where we stand as a club. These problems, where are they coming from? Are they really coming from Aubameyang? Are they really coming from Xhaka? No, they're really coming from the top. Uh, if we had the likes of Mark Overmas uh, in our system, if the likes of uh, 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 Edu were never here, if the likes of Mikelata were never here, we would have a better system running. But let's talk about Aubameyang as a player and also as a captain. Number one, he is absolutely at fault. 
absolutely at fault. I say that yesterday. I, I said that, that yesterday, and I'll say it again. Abameyang, what he did was disgraceful a hundred million times, right? He's, you know, it's disgraceful a um, uh, 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 hundred million times. It is disgraceful, 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 right? Your captain, your captain, you've got to show resilience. You've got to show resilience, right? You're hurting down there, probably, right? Because no one of us here that come and talk about the situation has really talked to Obama Young. I've not seen um, an, an interview interviewing a Pilmer Obama Young, even in the Arsenal media. There is no uh, Arsenal, uh, there is no Obama Young interview trying to understand what exactly is happening. Why is he beha you know, behaving the way he is behaving? There is no interview. So, he is, I know, he, you know, he, he has problems and he is, you know, he is hurting down there. You know, there is some, you know, sort of, uh, you know, uh, you know, problems that is actually going through as a player. And I really, really do understand. But all of us as Arsenal fans, all of us as Arsenal, uh, you know, as, you know, uh, you know, stakeholders, we are hurting. But you expect Mikel Arteta as the senior, because... Again, being captain makes you even small senior uh, to the likes of Xhaka and, uh, and Lacazette. So you're, 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 you're after the manager, after the manager, you're the next person we are looking at, right? After the manager, after the cameras turn away from, when the cameras turn away from, uh, from the manager, they turn to Pilem Rikabami, mean, they turn to the captain. You don't do that. Not on one occasion. And I think this decision has not been taken of the action that he came back late from Paris and, 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 and violated uh, the protocols and things like that. It's not true. These actions have been taken because Pel Emerica Bameyang has been at fault not the first time. And for the first time, I'm going to say, Mikel Arteta, well done. There are, two, uh, there are two scenarios where I will say Mikel Arteta, well done. On Nicola Pepe and on uh, you know, uh, Pel Emerica Bameyang. All right, guys. Let us swallow our pride. Uh, if you're Mikel Arteta out, like me, let us swallow our pride. The lad, the gaffer, has given Pepe and Aubameyang a chance to prove themselves. And they have you know, proven trash. They have really proven, oh, we can be trash. You know, we can be trash. We can be trash. I'm telling you, we could be trash. And we are trash. It's true. It's, it's, it's absolute sincerity. It's absolute, absolute sincerity. There is no way you're going to blame Mikel Arteta, uh, you know, for the problems that Pierre Mkabamiang has actually caused himself. Yes, he, you know, there are some natural problems, like maybe the situation he had with his family and personal issues uh, there, the lack of goal scoring, uh, you know, form and things like that. But the gaff has given you a chance as captain. The, you know, we were shouting. I shouted on top of my voice. The, why is Mkabamiang starting every game? What has he done to start every game? You remember, lads. Right at the beginning of this season, I spoke about it, but Mikel Arteta never ceased to give Pelham Rekabaming a chance. That shows you that that is how loyal Mikel Arteta was to the captain until the captain became absolute trash. It's it's unforgivable, right? It's unforgivable. It's like being um, it's like being the worst performer. Uh, or, you know, at the workplace, at your workplace, you're always consistently uh, the worst performer. And what you do, uh, on top of being the worst performer, you're not giving us results, then you become uh, a regular absentee, right? Uh, you become a, a regular late karma. It's, I mean, there is no remorse there. There is no remorse, right? There is no remorse from, from Aubameyang. There is no loyalty. Because the remorse, well, you know, the actions of remorse would be him training harder, him leading the club better, and him trying to show that he wants to get back to form and help Arsenal as a club. That is the remorse I expected. The remorse that, uh, you know, you show a positive char character when you're on the pitch. He's not done that. He's done that. that. I I've seen so many people who have saying, Aubameyang scored goals under Sen Wenger. He scored goals against, uh, under, uh, you know, uh, you know, Jagan Klopp at Dortmund. He scored goals under Thomas Tuchel at Dortmund. He scored goals under, you know, Emery. He's not scored, and he's not scoring goals against Ateta, under Ateta. He's having a problem. I don't think, 
Ateta is the problem with Pelmer Kabameyang. With the whole Arsenal structure, Ateta out. You know that. But at the moment, Pelmer Kabameyang, you want to convince me that Ateta is at fault for Pelmer Kabameyang. I, 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 can't, I, I can't fall for that. And I can't, uh, you know, I, I can't buy into that. Uh, I, I, honestly. That is not one uh, step. I'm not one step to, uh, to, uh, to siding or agreeing with people who say Abameyang is, um, is the right one. Ateta is destroying Abameyang, right? However much I don't like Abam uh, Ateta, however much I feel like he's not the right man. Actually, I do not dislike Ateta. I just feel like he's not the right manager to take on the club. I don't dislike Mikel Ateta. I do not. So uh, it's the same thing with the Bamiyang. It's, 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 yeah, it's, um, it's a very, very good scenario that I'm talking about one of the players that I really read so much, players that I really love so much to the heart. And now it's so sad that I've, I, I've got to come here and smash, dismantle the image of my own captain. Look, I don't have to do that. I'm not, I'm not really trying to uh, say that the should uh, is, is one of the worst players in the world, but how how do you as a player consider yourself unlucky after doing all those actions how do you consider yourself unlucky right it's like being in a family and um, you know, you provide nothing in the family and then you you know you, you always mourn they don't like me they do not like me this family is you know is i'm an, an out, i'm an outcast of this family they don't like me but you provide nothing you, you, you literally, uh, I mean, forgive my use of language, but you're literally useless if you're in a family uh, and you provide nothing, you're useless. Like, when they say, uh, this Christmas, we are contributing to a trip to Dubai, you can't pr you know, provide anything. Uh, when someone is sick in the family and you, um, you know, anyone, everyone is contributing something, you can't do anything. Uh, when it's time to sing songs, you can't sing. When it comes to cooking, you can't cook. Like, you literally provide nothing to the family, not entertainment, no nothing. You, you're useless, right? So, Birmingham has put in a, you know, himself in a situation where we're going to look at him and liability. Can you imagine the strongest asset of Arsenal Football Club um, around three years ago is now the biggest liability? He's earning the biggest amount of money. He's, uh, okay, so he, he has one year left you know, on his contract. But he's, uh, he's the most paid player at the club. He's been captain, right? He's been captain. And he's the only source of goals that we could trust, uh, you know, in the past five years. You know, all these have turned into negatives. Uh, look, I would be happy if a Birmingham was banging in goals and he was the most play paid player at Arsenal. I would be bragging and say, you know what? My, my captain, uh, my goal scorer, my talisman is the most, uh, is the most paid player uh, in the club. He's earning 300,000. You know that? I'll be happy to say that. But now it's a problem. It's, it's, it's back to the Messi Brazil, uh, you know, Messi Brazil situation, right? Ozil signs a new contract and everything goes in a mess. Everything is so wrong. Signing such a big contract, you sign it as an asset, right? It's it, Mohamed El Neni can never be given that contract, and you know why. And players like Mikel, uh, you know, players like Pierre Luc Aubameyang, this is what they forget. Uh, El Neni will never sign such a contract ever in his life, never, right? Players like Sid Kolasina. Why isn't that contract going to Alexander Lacazette? They're both for you're both forwards. Why is it coming to you and why is it not going to Lacazette? Because you're working hard, because you are an asset to the club. And you see how just you know, you know, childish decisions have made Pelmrick Abameyang one of the biggest liabilities at the club now. It's not ending here. No. It's not ending here. We are going to start seeing Pelham Rekabameyang is fighting with so-and-so in the dressing room. Pelham Rekabameyang uh, is, uh, is going to miss game, uh, you know, three games uh, you know, uh, because, uh, you know, because he's uh, on punishment. Right? But, but, but what, for what? Why? I, it's, that's what I don't get. Why? Yes, I've already said, you know, uh, you know my, 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 I've spoken my mind, my, uh, mind out uh, all the time that maybe these players were lied to, maybe they don't believe in the project, but you don't have to go this far. You don't have to really. You don't have to. You could just cancel your contract. You could just, maybe not cancel your contract, but you could just send in, you know, set in, send in uh, a transfer request um, and say that, um, you know, I want to go. 
I don't believe in the project anymore. I don't think Arsenal will hold, uh, would hold Pelmerick Aubameyang against his will. It's, 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 it's interesting. But then, uh, then lads, what we have to ask ourselves uh, in point two is how do we handle the Pell Emerick Aubameyang situation? Because it is not similar, but it is a replica of the Mesidozil situation. New contract, big money, asset turns into liability and uh, falls out with the manager. So how are we going to treat Pell Emerick Aubameyang? I think with Aubameyang, uh, one advantage uh, at the moment that he has is that he's falling out with the manager, the coaching staff, and things like that. He's not actually involved into the politics of um, uh, Messi Rosel, right? I think that is, uh, that is uh, uh, the advantage that he has as a player at the moment, right? It's not so much, it is not going uh, too political, right? It's not going to be political. And I think there is some kind of um, uh, redemption line for Pierre Mkabameyang. But how do we treat and how do, and how do we handle this situation? Do you, uh, do you just go Abameyang to the reserves like Ozu? Are, you, are we going to announce a squad in January without Abameyang? Uh, what are we going to do? It's going to be interesting to see how Mikel Ateta maturely right maturely handles this he said in his press conference that it hurts so much and that's why abamyang has been left out of the west ham squad i, I want to believe him you know he's li he lies a lot that's the problem i also lie a lot of times when um you know i'm i'm i mean i mean you know, i'm i'm speaking about my personal life but at times he really really lies a lot you know michael you know you know he's uh he's kind of a mouthpiece to ateta and and, and his crap uh crap pr you know pr trust the process but anyway so uh, it's going to be interesting, guys, how we handle this. Because in my opinion, what we should do is, yes, Aubameyang's you know, captaincy has been taken away, right? It is so hard at the moment for, for him. I think he should be making it to the bench regularly. It is it's not going to help him as a player. Because it's not only the loyalty to the club, like Mikel is saying. Uh, for me, uh, uh, like uh, the loyalty on the part of the club, we've done it. We've stripped him of the captaincy and we are now chasing the goals of Arsenal Football Club. And I do not regret at any point in time that Arsenal have stripped the captaincy of, of, of Pierre Mirkabami. I don't regret. I know Arsenal is a bigger club than any player out there, be it Messi or Ronaldo. No one should ever... Uh, we were in the summer and... Uh, uh, um, someone said... Someone said... Uh, there's a pundit on Talksport who said Ben White is bigger than Arsenal. Uh, did I? Uh, am I right? Say bigger. Ben White is bigger than Arsenal. I was like, look at this fool. You're, you're useless. Because there is no club. There's no player. Uh, for me, the reason that's why there is no club that is. Uh, you know, there's no player that's bigger than a club. There is no player that's gonna have the rich history uh, or the poor history or the history um, of a football club. Clubs last for 100 years, 200 la you know, years, 300 years, 400 years. Right? And players last for 30 years. At most, 40 years. So there is no player who is bigger than a club. No player. Right? A club is a collection of players. A player is... Um, uh, what, 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 what should I say? So for me, guys, truth is, truth be told, Perrin Kabameyang being stripped of the, uh, 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 of the captain armband, uh, I do not regret the position uh, we have taken. But what I'm going to say is, what I do not want to see, though, is the player now being put, uh, you know, being left, uh, uh, you know, being hung to dry. I don't want to see Kabameyang uh, being thrown under the bus every time, right? Yes, the crisis is there. He's up it, you know, he's, you know, he's um, acted stupidly. We've, you know, we've accepted that. We've taken that in. Now, let's move on, right? Let's move on from Pierre-Brick Aubameyang. I don't want to see Mikel Ateta using Mikel uh, uh, Aubameyang uh, as an excuse. I don't want to see the media using Aubameyang as an excuse. I don't want to see uh, Aubameyang, uh, you know, excommunicated. I don't want to see Aubameyang thrown out of the squad. Um, you know, uh, I, I don't want to see Aubameyang thrown out of matchday squads. No. Should, be, you know, should he start games for Arsenal? No. 
Honestly, that is off the back of his very, very poor performance. Not because he's not captain, right? So he sh no, should he make it to the bench? Yes. I mean, if, if we have a bench that has a bum yank, uh, it makes much more sense. It doesn't, doesn't it? It really, really make, you know, makes much more sense. So I don't want to see a bum yank being thrown under the bus. Shout out to my man, uh, you know, uh, DJ Moki. Shout out to you, bro. But look, guys, we have to agree that the way we treated Messi Rozil was a disgrace. And we do not want that to happen ever again to any other player. It's a disgrace. It tarnishes the image of the club. Uh, if 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 they are saying, "Oh, we are trying to 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 uh, uh, protect the uh, the interests of this club and the, its image," we need to act maturely. And I'm, it's going to be interesting for me how Mikel Arteta, um, you know, proceeds with this. But also, there's a big role to play on the side of Pierre Mourkabamian. How is he going to handle this situation? Is he going to go rebellious? Is he going to start missing, you know, skipping training? Is he going to start, uh, you know, working harder? Because it it really matters, right? It really matters. So uh, away from that, then point three is: is there a line of redemption um, for Pelimrika Bamiang? Is there a line of redemption? My answer, honestly, is yes. There is. There is a line for, uh, of redemption. Uh, his career. Uh, is not yet dropped that far. Uh, I don't think if he got a good club uh, and found a very, very good scoring form, he could be um, on the footballing scene for another three good years. So I don't think he's actually drawn, uh, you know, fallen too much. I think the problem with Abameyang is that um, he's lost, lost that confidence. He's lost that self-belief uh, that he had, uh, you know, in himself. I, 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 I can pick, you know, uh, I can pick out um, one or two goals. One goal that he scored against uh, uh, Tottenham Hotspur uh, in that game uh, where we won uh, was it was it three uh, one? Uh, Abamian going to the score sheet, and um, was it two two? Was it or, or, or three one? I'm not really forgetting. But that um, you know, if 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 you did watch that game. Uh, that uh, uh, you know that uh, uh, non-stop volley uh, that um, you know uh, he hit against Tottenham outside the uh, outside the, outside the 18 years box. That too, that takes a lot of confidence. That takes a lot of belief in yourself, right? And there's so many goals that he has scored, and you believe really this is a typical uh, you know go goal of a you know, a typical good player. So there is some line of redemption. If Abamian doesn't fall too much, there is a line of redemption. There is a chance that he will get back and um, fight as a man, fight as a player. Yes, I know at the end of the season, it's going to be, the main focus is going to be him leaving Arsenal, Barcelona are rumored to be interested, uh, and a couple of other clubs. I don't want to discuss transfers right now, but I think uh, what's going to happen is uh, it's going to be either he lives in the summer, but if he doesn't live in the summer, it's going to be so hurting. It's going to be so difficult for him uh, to cope up. But anyway, guys, <laughs> look, do you agree that there is a line for redemption uh, for Mikel, uh, for Mikel and uh, Abameyang? Could they, you know, could they be? Could there be a line for redemption? Make sure you smash a like on the video. I, I'm, I'm, I'm really doing. Uh, I'm, I, I'm really enjoying, you know, talking to you guys all the time uh, these days. So make sure you smash a like on the video. Um, I'm really, really grateful. So then the last thing we need to talk about uh, under Abameyang and the situation with the club, apart from the redemption, is should Abameyang easily leave the club because of what has happened? Should Abameyang easily be left to leave the club because of what has happened? And, and I'm going to take the reasons, uh, you know, uh, from the comment section. That is your question. Should Abameyang be left to go? Should his contract be considered, uh, you know, for termination because of what has happened? Or do you think um, that would be extra, extra tough uh, as a decision? But anyway, guys, thanks for everybody for watching. I'm really, really, really grateful that you guys always give me your time. I'm, I'm, I'm really, 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 very, very grateful uh, as always. Uh, right? So let's get to you guys. Kosi, welcome back, my man Anu. Uh, big up to you, Anu. Big up to you, Hillary. Uh, uh, Anu says, I wish Kianteni should be our next captain and Ramsdale follow. And then uh, Gabriel. Um, 
Uh, big up you to you, Chris. Anu says, we don't want Jaka as captain. Arthur Kiza, big up to you in the chat. Uh, Chris says, Alba should have left, uh, should have been left to be captain. Uh, uh, is, um, uh, this is uh, Kossi's hashtag one fan, fake prince. Oh, thank you so much. Wow, I'm, I'm really, really, really uh, carried away. Uh, and I'm going to display this. Wow, thank you so much. Wow, thank you so much. Uh, Kossi's uh, hash number one, right? Uh, uh, you know, uh, Fick Prince says, logged in, uh, you know, big up to you, uh, big up to you, my man, uh, Fick Prince, and says, I'm happy that he is off the captaincy, right? Very, very happy. You guys are really uh, uh, happy, really happy. I need Gabriel Magales to be a captain. This is according to Maxi, uh, Maximin. Uh, big up to you, Maximin, in the chat. Uh, hope you're doing well. Zondi says, uh, Katie out, uh, 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 should be our new captain. That's Kian um, uh, uh, And then Freak Prince says, we need Gabriel Magales uh, as captain or Aaron Ramsdale. Uh, there, Kiza Arthur says, Let's, uh, let Gabriel Magales be our next captain. Uh, 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 he says Tierney, Odegaard, Lacazette, or uh, and Bukayo Saka or Smith Rowe should be captains or can be captains. Uh, Zoni says Ketty, new captain. Um, uh, Chris says uh, Ben White or Gabriel should be the next captain. Maximin says Ramsdale or Gabriel Magales should be captain there. Chris says uh, uh, um, uh, uh, Chris says let, 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 let me get your uh, your comments, Chris, from right from the start. Gabriel Six should be captain. That's according to Maximin. Um, and then Marka Chris says I miss Louise. Um, uh, uh, and then Maximin says Louise for what? Uh, and then um, Chris says uh, we wait for the um. Uh, we wait for uh, uh, the winner or Ram. Uh, uh, we wait for Wilshire uh, uh, or Ramsey in Jan to be our captains. I, I, I think. Look, look. I think Ramsey had uh, a chance to be Arsenal captain. Had he stayed, he would have been uh, Arsenal captain at some point in time. And then Wilshire uh, also had a chance to be Arsenal captain. I think they really, really had big chances to be captains, but um, things really didn't go in their, you know, in their favor. Uh, Gabriel, uh, next captain, um, says, uh, you know, at uh, uh, Luis was really influential and a good player. He helped, uh, he helped, and during his reign, Arsenal conceded few goals. I don't, I don't think that is really, really true uh, that we conceded few goals under Luis. He was really mistake prone. But one thing you had, you know, with the Louis, he was a very, he is a very, very talented guy. So. Um, in terms of creativity, because we, we really, really struggled uh, to create chances, he would really help us as a club to create more chances as a club. But I really, I, I think, uh, you know, Luis uh, was really, really talented. Uh, Martin Odek be captain, that's according to Dissan. Uh, and then uh, Frank Prince says, I think Ateta didn't just want um, to make Alba feel so down. And that's why he gave uh, uh, that excuse uh, for stripping him off. Uh, all right. Uh, okay, uh, and then uh, it says, Chris, trust me, you're missing a red uh, card at our. Uh, uh, um, uh, I, I, I don't. I didn't get to read that. Uh, of course, see, I, I, I vote for Gabriel. Thank you so much. Um, Chris says, you know, <laughs> Chris, you know, Chris, Chris is reacting to your comment there. Uh, you know, Prince. Uh, Okoma says Tierney could be the perfect Arsenal captain. Uh, I mean, many of you are really taking my uh, taking my side. Uh, um, I'm, I'm really happy that you're taking my side. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, then he says, I like uh, your, what you're doing, Kosi. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Let me, let, let's discuss this. Let me discuss this. Um, Glenn is saying he is sad. Glenn, why are you sad? Like, why are you sad, Glenn? Let me know in the comment, bro. Uh, why are you sad? Because, look, I think, honestly, if we are objective, right, it is not a moment to celebrate, okay? It's not, it should not be a moment to celebrate when we lose our captain. It is a moment of shame. Yeah, I think that's the right word. It's a moment of shame when Arsenal uh, lose their captain due to disciplinary uh, foolishness. It should be a moment of shame. Absolutely. Uh, but l let me know, my man, uh, you know, there, why, you, why, you, why you're not happy. Uh, Daniel says, let's give, uh, uh, let's give him time to redeem, uh, to redeem, to redeem his career, uh, bro. Okay. Um, uh, Gerard says, hi, I trust, my, uh, I trust, um, Mikko, uh, I tried, I, I trust Mikel Arteta. 
um, um, and Eric says, I'm back, my friend. Big up to you, my man, Eric Ogoya. Uh, really, really appreciate you for always tuning in. Really, really appreciate. This uh, Musan says, Saka can work uh, as the next captain. You know, you're really sure, guys. You're really, really sure. Um, Heiko C, about De Jong, I have read that De Jong said after signed for Barcelona that he had his thoughts about a career uh, like after Ajax to go to Arsenal and after that to Barcelona. Yeah, I've seen the stories as well, but um, right now uh, he's already moved that past, you know, past that stage of being, uh, you know, a crying baby that is crying for bands that have been, you know, thrown into uh, garbage. He should be focusing on his career now. Uh, but of course, we, we, we are really interested in Frankie de Jong. Uh, so he could have a chance to, to play for us. Of course, we're a big brand of football, uh, aren't we? Arsenal Football Club, we're a very, very big club. Uh, Marco Chris says, well done, Kostis. You kept me busy um, uh, in 2021 in the lockdown. You really blessed uh, uh, um, uh, really blessed to be a part of your show. Uh, thank you so much, Marco Chris. And um, I'm really happy to be your entertainer, uh, your, news, uh, your news provider, um, your um, your fan representative, you oh, uh, um, to get your thoughts, you know, to share this. I'm really, really happy with you, lads. This is one of the best uh, communities, or you know, on the on, on this uni on YouTube, and um, you're one of my best communities in the world, really, lads. I, I'm not really lying. Um, uh, Dennis says he has been letting us down, uh, failing to score open goals. I think, look. You don't take um, uh, 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 a, a player's captaincy because he's performing poorly, right? No, you don't do that. I think we are taking away his captaincy because he's not performing well. That's the truth. Uh, so uh, Glenn finally reacts and says, uh, we shouldn't have changed captains mid-season. Alba isn't a captain, but uh, it just ruins everything. It's now Alba versus, uh, uh, versus Arsenal, which we didn't need, shouldn't be celebrating. Uh, uh, absolutely. Absolutely, you're right. You're right. And um, I, I, look, I've said it. I've said it. And, and there isn't anything I've said. I, I've even said, Glenn. I said, how we handle this is going to be key. How we handle this from, uh, from, uh, from this time now is going to be key. Are we pushing him out? Are we going to, uh, you know, is, is it going to be an outcast? Uh, anything like that? But anyway, you're right. Uh, you're right. It shouldn't be a moment of celebration. It should be a moment of reflection and shame, honestly. It should be a moment of shame. But honestly, for me, Aubameyang, I don't regret this, uh, the decision. Uh, maybe the timing, but the decision, no. And, and I know, you, 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 you know you're right, Glenn. Um, you know, it should have been at the end of the season. Uh, and probably, you know, consider maybe Aubameyang then leaving uh, and things like that. But, you know, you're right. Uh, big up to you, Kossi. Uh, this is according to, uh, you know, Simon. Oh, thank you so much, Simon. And big up to everybody in the chat. 64 people watching. Make sure you hit the like button. Just hit the like button. You know, have you seen these TikTok uh, you know, buttons? Like, hit the like button until it bursts. Please make sure you do that. Uh, what do you think Ateta sees in Kuliseski? Uh, just, uh, 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 just it's interesting for me. Uh, what, uh, what are your thoughts? This is according to Captain Nemo. I think um, Kuliseski is... Um, a modern forward. I think that is why Arsenal want him. He's uh, it's more like a modern forward. Like you could use him as as, as an inverted winger. You could use him as a forward, like in um like like a, that, that kind of Paulo Dybala player. Or you can also use him as a James Madison. You can also use him uh, as a traditional winger. I think the you know what I, I don't see Arsenal going for uh, two strikers. What they want though, what what, what Mikel what Mikelato wants to do is bring in someone that can be that versatile. That can you know uh, share a lot in terms of you know going forward. You know, that, that, that can share a lot uh, you know on the forward line. And Nick Pepe would have been that player, but Pepe is really uh, limited and restricted uh, in some areas. I think that's why uh, they're looking at Kulusevski. They want someone that comes in and you know you could use him as a ten, you could use him as a winger. You could use him as a seven, as a eleven, uh, as a false nine. You could use him as as anything because uh, if you look at many of the blogs, they'll tell you he is a winger. But if you look at how he plays uh, on, you know, um, uh, at Sweden, he plays in a four four two with Alexander Isak and him uh, as the two strikers. So I think it is his versatility. I think it is his versatility uh, across the forward line. Uh, 
Cosi, let Martinelli also be among the captains. Not really. No, 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 no. I'm a big Martinelli fan, generational talent. You know me when I when it comes to Gabriel to Gabriel Martinelli, I'm the biggest fan, right? But no, 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 no. Not anywhere, no, not anywhere close. Not anywhere close. Not Martinelli. Leave my boy alone. Hey, Cosi, uh, that shame is on Abamia because he's not disciplined. Uh, uh, he's not disciplined. He deserves to be uh, sacked as uh, you know, as captain. Uh, my man uh, Chris says, uh, uh, that lad, uh, Dusan Blahovic, update uh, 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 on January, please. Uh, let's do that at uh, let's do that at uh, at nine uh, at, at nine thirty today. Yeah, let's do that at nine thirty today. Uh, honestly, because um, uh, I'm really running out of time. Uh, well done, Kosi. I love your show. Watching in from uh, you know uh, Chambogo. One love. Big up to you, my man, Rich. Uh, big up to you, my man, Rich. Uh, I'm very very close to Chambogo. By the way, these days, very very close to Chambogo. So. Uh, we could meet up one day, maybe. Uh, uh, so, Dusan Blahovic, I'll be providing an update uh, later uh, today at uh, exactly 9.30 p.m. For me, the lineup tomorrow, unlike you, Kosi, I would prefer Naus to, Lo uh, uh, I prefer Naus to Lokonga. He holds the ball better and he's uh, a little bit stronger. Uh, that is the last comment I will take on this video. Thanks, uh, thanks everybody. Let's see the like button. Hit the like button. Let's get them to at least uh, 50 by the end of the show. I don't know if we have if we have hit 50. Uh, I'm not even looking at it. But let's make sure we hit at least 50 by the end of the show. If you have not yet, make sure we get there. So, guys, do you agree that uh, Lokonga is um is Lokonga better than Nice or is Nice better than Lokonga? In, in my opinion, I think Ainsley. Is a good player. Is a talent, not a generational talent, and I think that is where Lokonga uh, comes in. For me, I compare Lokonga to the likes of Eduardo Camavinga. I compare Lokonga to that level. That you know, th that is the that is the caliber of players uh, that I think about when I think about Alba Sambi Lokonga, Eduardo Camavinga. Honestly, Niles is uh, a player uh, who can execute a role well once in a while. He's not that consistent, right? He's not like Obisem Lokonga. Lokonga's passing is better than Ainsley. Let's agree to that. Uh, Strength-wise, maybe um, both of them are not really, they're really, really that strong. But I don't, I, I don't I'm, I'm, they, I've never been frightened. I've never been uh, scared, uh, you know, going into a game because we are playing Lokonga and it's not muscular. I've never been that scared. Uh, I, I don't know, but I've never really been that scared. But anyway, guys, thanks everybody for watching in. Um, I, I can't take it you know, uh, any longer. Uh, I've got a lot of commitments to do. I have some ed video to, you know, videos to edit, um, and in the, th then I have some work to do. And then, um, of course, we will jumbo up. Uh, you know, uh, all you know, all Mikelata said at nine thirty today. We'll, we'll jump up all what Mikelata said and the transfers. And the latest around who is coming in January. If only we get this video to 100 likes. So 100 likes and we will have a January transfer update at 9.30 p.m. See you there.